On September 18th of 2011, Jamie Rodmeyer would be found by his older sister Alyssa in their backyard. He had died via suicide by hanging. He was just 14 years old. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be discussing the death of Jamie or James T. Rodemeyer. He was known for his activism against homophobia and he also was on YouTube and he was a blogger on Tumblr. His videos on YouTube helped victims of bullying and of homophobic bull bullying in particular. He was very open about his homosexuality and he faced such severe bullying because of this. Jamie's inspiration to help others came from Lady Gaga, which was a person that he admired most. He often referred to her in his videos and he would quote her to provide guidance when it came to helping others. Now, throughout middle school, Jamie encountered a lot of bullying, unnecessary bullying, because of his sexuality. There was anonymous posts on his Formspring account that included hate messages, uh, such as, Jamie is stupid, gay, fat, and ugly. He must die. Or, I wouldn't care if you died. No one would. It would make everyone way more happier. Now, despite this, he used his own experience for his bullying to make videos on YouTube under the username xgothemo99xx. And this was to help others that were going through similar situations. He also made a video for It Gets Better Project, which was a which was a website dedicated to preventing teen suicide. And unfortunately, his, his tormenting just became too much and he would die via suicide, via hanging in his backyard. And like I said, his sister would end up finding him. The Amherst, New York Police Department ended up launching an investigation into Jamie's death that was assisted by the Erie County um, District Attorney, Frank Sedita. Now, this investigation lasted nine weeks, and there was an analysis done of his computer and his mobile phone. There was possible evidence of criminal harassment that was found, and these incidents either had insufficient evidence to prosecute or they had expired beyond their statute of limitations. So ultimately, there was no files that were charged because uh, because the statute had already exceeded its time. News of Jamie's death resulted in a very large, like, outrage worldwide. His parents, Tim and Tracy, were interviewed by news outlets about their son and his struggle with his bullying. Both of his parents took the opportunity to promote peace and equality in hope of preventing teen suicide in the LGBT QIA community. So there was also an interview done with Ann Curry on the Today Show in which his parents said that their son and daughter were still being bullied after Jamie's suicide. And his sister attended home, like a school homecoming dance. Jamie's friends were chanting his name in support of his memory when a Lady Gaga song came on. And as a result of this, the very same bullies at the dance began chanting they were happy that Jamie was dead. That's fucking rude. Now, Lady Gaga, after learning about his death, stated how she was extremely upset about this, and she spent her days crying, yelling, and reflecting his death. She went on to de dedicating her song Hair to Jamie during a performance at the iHeartRadio Music Festival at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. She said that, I wrote this record about how your identity is really all you've got when you're in school. So tonight, Jamie, I know you're up there looking at us and you're not a victim. You're a lesson to all of us, and I know it's a bit of a downer, but sometimes the right thing is more important than the music. Lady Gaga then later met with Barack Obama to discuss the administration about how they could prevent bullying in schools. Also in response to his death, Miss New York... Caitlin Monty founded an online petition to bring the issue of cyberbullying, which is known as Jamie's Law, to New York legislation. Shortly after, uh, Jeffrey Klein proposed a new cyberbullying legislation, and the two then joined and launched the New York Cyberbullying Census. In 2011, in October of 2011, Zachary Quinto noted Jamie Rodmeyer's death as a genesis of his decision to come out publicly as being gay. So Zachary Quinto was still closeted homosexual until this point, and he, he said this on his website. But in light of Jamie's death, it became clear to me that the instant 
in an instant that living a gay life without publicly acknowledging it is simply not enough to make a significant contribution. And without being publicly like publicly outing yourself you are not able to have complete equality when it comes to everything in the world zachary's response to this was coming out and in a reaction like he also reacted to gay suicides that were caused by bullying as well uh dan klofler of abc news now also came out in because in regards to this as well now the that same month another teenager jamie hubley also committed suicide for the same reason while he never explicitly talked to Jamie Rodemeyer, there are severe comparisons when it comes to this. That, my friends, is the death of Jamie Rodemeyer. I wanted to include this because of the sensitivity of this, not just because he was also on YouTube and he was a blogger on Tumblr, because his age, the effect it has on this community, and just that people really need to understand that it's not just... I'm here, I'm proud of myself, I'm out to the world. There's a lot of people that will get dogged for who they are because others simply just don't understand who they are. So I hope you guys learned something from this case today, and I'll see you guys in another one.